What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com, back again with the NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Friday the 13th of January. This is a fun slate altogether. Anytime you get a Friday the 13th, you know something weird is going to happen. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite plays are. Then go sign up at BetMGM. They are the sponsor of this video. Link in the description. You can get two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum and up to $1,000 in bonus bets based on your first bet, so long as you use that link and deposit at least $10. But I say, put in a bunch of money, make a pretty big first bet. If it wins, you just move on with the money. If it loses, you get it back in bonus bets. So we're going to round out the bottom of my top 10 now with Jalen Green, Zach Levine, at Rhymes, Sadiq Bey, Miles Turner, and Killian Hayes on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? It's time to find out. First up at number five, we're going to Anthony Edwards. It is a big price tag, but he is shooting guard, small forward eligible. So you gain the flexibility of guard, forward, and utility. 8,900 projected for 44. The goal is 54. He's in the optimal lineup 16% of the time. The appeal for me for Anthony Edwards is one, he's going to play a ton, 36 minutes. There's still no towns. There's a couple Q tags out there, including on Anthony Edwards himself. I got him at 1.2 fantasy points per minute. In theory, it's a pace down spot, but there's no Chris Paul. So I, he's sort of the reason that things become pace down. 24 points, six boards, four and a half assists, and two stocks for Edwards. But this is a team that's made up of a lot of guys that aren't real, like, ultra, I'm in the rotation type guys. I think Anthony Edwards is ripe to destroy this Phoenix team if he wants to. It's up to him, man. You never know. But for right now, the way that I have him projected, he's the fifth best play on today's slate. And at number four, Keldon Johnson, small forward eligible, 6,800, projected for 39 goals, 44. He's in the optimal lineup 17% of the time. Came back in and played big minutes after missing two straight. I gave him 32, but I got him at 1.15, 1.2 fantasy points per minute here. It's a big time pace up spot for Golden State, and he just simply takes so many more shots when Devin Vassell isn't around. So 30% usage for Keldon Johnson. 24 points, six boards, two and a half assists, and a stock. They are pretty sizable underdogs at home, but maybe the mystique of this big game, and I, when I say big, I mean from an attendance perspective, maybe that keeps it close, who knows? But I think Keldon Johnson's in a great spot, and I think there's some minutes upside if this one is competitive. Staying on the Spurs, I'm going to Trey Jones. Point guard eligible, 6,200, projected for 35. The goal is 41. He's in the optimal lineup 17% of the time. 30 minutes for Trey Jones. 1.15 fantasy points per minute, 22% usage. Again, really nice spot against Golden State. Pace up. That's what we're looking for here. 16 points, 6 assists, 5 boards. Really just playing solid basketball for the Spurs. There's not a lot of bright lights on San Antonio, but we're seeing that Trey Jones is a solid starting point guard. And a stock and a half. Whether you're going to Trey Jones or Keldon Johnson or both, I don't think that that's crazy. I have no issue getting to the actual best guys on the Spurs. At number two, we go to the Clippers for Terrence Mann. This one's simple. Point guard shooting guard eligible, 4,300 for reasons that don't make sense. He's projected for 30. The goal is 31 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 24% of the time. I got him in for 34 minutes. He played 40 the last time out. He could easily play 36 or more here. He's like a 0.85 guy, 16% usage, 14 points, six boards, three assists, a little over a stock. Pace down spot against Denver, but that's fine. He's just not priced for the guy that's playing the minutes that he's doing now. He's the starting point guard by a mile. They've removed Reggie Jackson from the rotation completely. He's just gonna be out there. There's still no Paul George. There's still no Luke Kennard. So the minutes are there. Absolute no-brainer. Play as much Terrence Mann as you can get. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder to please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments who your favorite plays are, and then sign up at BetMGM using the link in the description. Your number one contender for today is Andrew Nemhard. Point guard, shooting guard eligible, 4,300 projected for 31. The goal is 31, and he is in the optimal lineup 27% of the time. No Tyrese Halliburton here. A couple other Q tags, which can make this interesting, but Nemhard's role completely changes when Halliburton's not on the floor. Assist rate, big time boost. Usage rate goes up at least a little bit. So now, 34 minutes, 
0.92 fantasy points per minute in a pace-up spot against Atlanta. 16% usage, 12 points, 6.5 assists, 4 rebounds, and a stock and a half. He is not priced as if he's going to be taking this role from Halliburton for the next two or three weeks. So whether you're grabbing Nemhard or Mann, in my opinion, they're starting off every cash game that you have and most of the GPP lineups that you should build. This one's very easy. They're not on the same plane as anybody else, but Andrew Nemhard edges out Terrence Mann. He's my number one contender. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Friday the 13th. It is January. FanDuel version's around here somewhere, so check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. We're back again Sunday morning for another edition of The Contenders.